All right, hello, and I appreciate uh, your flexibility with uh, allowing me to present a pre-recorded lecture for uh, for today. So uh, today I wanted to t start talking about data wrangling in uh, in R and using the tidyverse, which is uh, going to be an important concept. And we're working through data visualization, and so I want to. Um, start introducing some data wrangling concepts. You've seen a little bit in your data camp homework, um, but I want to kind of go over a few more of those um, functions in a, in a little bit more detail. And we will uh, be working back and forth between data wrangling and then visualizing um, the data after we've done some wrangling. Um, one thing is I want uh, to tell everybody that what they need to do for the data camp homework is they need to set your first and last name um, in order to get the enter the grades into the grade book uh, we need to be able to know uh, we need to know who's who's done their homework and and right now for some of you on data camp uh, all it shows is the email address and that just makes it really hard to um, to try to figure out whose uh, homework um, you know who who did the homework, and so um, so all you have to do is you just go to uh, you know datacamp.com slash profile slash account underscore settings, and then you can enter your first and last name there, and um, and that will really help us out in terms of getting your data camp grades into the grade book. All right, so let's talk about data wrangling, and the functions that we're going to look at are part of a library called dplyr, and dplyr is one of the packages included in a larger library of packages called the tidyverse. And so um, you can either just load a dplyr by itself or you could load the tidyverse. I actually recommend using um, the tidyverse because um, when you load the tidyverse it's going to kind of load a bunch of other package dependencies. It takes a few extra seconds to load the tidyverse um, but uh, you know, because it's loading uh, several more packages, but there's quite a few um, handy functions in, included in all of those other packages that uh, that I just recommend using um, library tidyverse when uh, when loading these things. All right, so um, you know when you are working with um, with data and you're trying to manipulate it, there's a few. Um, uh, kind of conceptually, what you need to do is you need to figure out <laughs> what you want to do, and then you want to be able to kind of describe those tasks in the form of a computer program, and then you execute the program. That's kind of just the basic gist of you know what it's like working with a computer and working with data. And the functions uh, found in dplyr uh, make this easy, right? So this dplyr package that we're going to you know really be um, uh, working with today. Um, kind of ma makes it, um, I think, easy to easier to think about. Once you get a handle on the verbs that are available to you, um, I think you can start thinking about, okay, how how am I going to approach this problem? All right. So there's a there's a few key verbs, a few key verbs, and uh, your actions in dplyr are kind of constrained to these things, but it, um, I think by <laughs> limiting your choices, but um, you can kind of combine them in, in a way that uh, allows you to, you know, really create um, uh, basically the, uh, the results that you're looking for, okay? So let's, let's talk about these verbs. And these are going to be kind of the, uh, the most important ones, all right? So um, it says, dplyr is a grammar of data manipulation providing a consistent set of verbs that help you solve the most common data manipulation challenges. All right, and so our verbs are select, filter, mutate, arrange, and summarize. And then there's also another verb called group by. Now there are additional verbs that uh, that do exist, but these are going to be kind of your your key ones. Okay, select basically selects columns. Filters basically selects rows. So select picks variables, and filter picks cases. Okay. Uh, mutate will add new variables. Arrange will kind of sort, change the ordering of the rows. 
and then summarize takes the rows that are available or uh, reduces um, multiple rows into a single row okay so summarize um, you know if you have a, a whole bunch of things it'll it, it reduces it right it, it creates a summary of the rows that, that you've combined all right um, these uh, can be paired with another function called group by uh, which allows you to perform these actions or any of these operations um, and apply it to each group there is a cheat sheet um, at this link and if you click it it will open up and um, and you can take a look at it and it's a it's it's a pretty good cheat sheet okay so um, uh, yeah you've got summarize cases group cases manipulate and um, you know all, all kinds of things and uh, you, you'll see there are quite a few um, additional kind of verbs that um, that have been uh, you know that we see here so not just filter but you have distinct and slice and things like that arrange and add row pull and select and all of those kinds of things I'm gonna start with uh, the ones that I've I've mentioned here and then um, I encourage you to kind of um, look at the cheat sheet and uh, work through and and try out some of these different um, uh, functions uh, that are available okay all right so first of all let's talk about select and filter so in order to kind of um, work through our examples uh, I'm, I want to show uh, work with this uh, data set called the the Star Wars data set okay so uh, actually let me clear my console and clear my environment and let's load up uh, the tidyverse okay and there is a data set called Star Wars and this contains information about different characters in the Star Wars movies now this data set was created um, after the seventh movie um, before the eighth movie so uh, <laughs> the release order of the uh, of the movies are episodes four five six then episodes one two three and then episodes uh, seven eight and nine um, and uh, and we have that okay oh and that, I guess that's the 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 main line and then they had spin-offs you had uh, Rogue One and uh, Solo and I don't know and, um, now there's TV shows <laughs> you know the Mandalorian and all the um, Clone War shows and stuff but anyway this is just about the uh, the first seven so episodes one through seven um, even though they weren't released in that order episodes one through seven so um, so I think they have you know you have Ray and Finn but not uh, Rose or um, you know any um, any of the uh, characters from uh, the eighth movie and stuff so anyway um, each row is a character all right, so you can see the first row is Luke Skywalker, and the second row is C-3PO, and then you have R2-D2 and Darth Vader, and so on and so forth. And we have height uh, as estimate uh, height in centimeters, mass in kilograms, um, uh, their hair color, their skin color, their eye color, their birth year. In the Star Wars universe, uh, birth year is... Uh, years before the battle battle of yavin i think <laughs> so at the end of episode four uh you know the death star blows up and uh sorry that was a spoiler um uh and i think um the, the ages are measured at that uh from that point in time so i think luke i guess was 19 at the and so it was you know he was born 19 years before the the battle at yavin and um i don't yeah i think this i apologize to anybody who knows more about star wars lore and uh and if i'm getting any of this wrong so um but anyway this is uh this is what we have uh and um okay so uh that's what we have there um and then we have whether they are male or female um you know c3po and r2d2 um, they are neither male nor female, but their gender, um, uh, is, is masculine, right? So 
they kind of refer to them as he or whatnot, but um, but the uh, um, but they are droids, so they um, inherently, I guess, sex less, but they are uh, they use masculine genders to kind of refer to them. And then uh, the homeworld from where they were created, and then their species. And so we have human species and droid species, um, and uh, and this is this is what we have. Okay, there's uh, there's more variables. Okay, um, there are films, vehicles, and starships, uh, which kind of indicate um, you know which movies they appear in and which uh, what vehicles they've they've driven and things like that. So let me see if I can get. Let's just look at this first. Um, maybe, uh, or actually, let's do films. Um, and so, if we look at these, are the um, the films that uh, so that Luke Skywalker appears in. Uh, so the first row, the first row, which uh, which films, and he appears in um, The Empire Strikes Back, Revenge of the Sith, Return of the Jedi, A New Hope, and The Force Awakens. <laughs> His appearance in Revenge of the Sith is just as a baby, and uh, and he also appears in The Force Awakens, um, being the the seventh movie. Just kind of, um, well, maybe that's also a spoiler. Um, at the uh, at the end of the movie, um, okay. So when you select use select with this, okay. The way we use it is we do select from what the database data frame name is. Okay, so our data frame is called Star Wars, all right. And you don't need to put quotes around the column names. You can just kind of um, enter this, all right. As long as there's no spaces in the name. So if we wanted to select the Columns name, home world, species, and films. Uh, this is this we can do that, and we will select these four columns. Now, um, I recommend using the pipe. Okay, using the pipe, and so the pipe comes in a function uh, in a package called Magritter. And so if you don't have this um, function loaded, so like if I um, if I restart R here. Okay, and let me just do library dplyr, um, and if I try to use, um, I don't think, okay, so here we have Star Wars, I, let me see if I, ha I can do the pipe. Um, I think I might get an error that says the pipe is not, um, okay, actually, um, um, I might have the pipe already loaded, but sometimes you'll get a you'll get an error message that the pipe isn't available, and so if that this if that happens, just do library tidyverse, and that will load the package needed to um, to make use of the pipe. There is a there is a this package specific to the pipe is called a library magrit magritter. Okay, um, and this is it's based on a. There's, it's like a, it's like a nerd joke. Um, um, there's a, there's a, in, uh, painting called the treachery of images, and it's got the line that says, "This is not a pipe," uh, by Rene Magritte, and it's uh, the thing is, um, no, it is the famous, you know, basically. Uh, this is just a picture of a pipe. Okay, it's a picture of a pipe. It is not a pipe itself, and um, and anyway, so this surrealistic image. So basically, we're using the pipe, and the um, the package to load the pipe is called uh, Magrit Magritar. Okay, and it would uh, it lo loads it up, but um, it gets loaded when you do library tidyverse. So, but if you ever get an error that says you know I can't figure out what this function is, okay. Uh, this this pipe function, then um, you can call library tidyverse or uh, library magreter to uh, to make sure it gets loaded. All right. So anyway, um, when we use the pipe, um, rather than doing select from Star Wars, 
the names of the columns, we can do Star Wars and then select the, uh, the names of the columns, okay? And, uh, and so whenever you do this, uh, basically the part that comes before the pipe becomes the first argument inside this. So this is equivalent to doing select Star Wars comma name um, and something. And so, you know, in the case of just using one function like select, this seems a little bit silly, but um, a lot of times you want to kind of chain several of these functions together. And so um, the output of this select function is this, uh, uh, we call it a tibble, this kind of data frame, this tibble, uh, which has 87 rows and four columns. And then we can take um, this output and do another operation. So um, the shortcut to insert the pipe when you're working in R is uh, Command or Control Shift M. And you can just kind of keep typing that. I mean, you can do um, percent greater than percent. And I think uh, on data camp, you have to type in percent greater than percent. Um, there, you don't have a keyboard shortcut um, when you're working on it in data camp. But in um, when you have R Studio open, you can hit Control or Command Shift M to um, to insert a pipe, and, and that's a handy little shortcut. Um, all right, so here are a few things that you can do when selecting um, columns to select or not select. So you can put a negative sign or a minus sign in front of a thing, and it won't select that column. So I could say take Star Wars and don't select the name, eye color, and birth year. And um, you know we had 14 columns, and now those three columns are removed, and so we get um, a table with 11 columns. Here I've then piped that into this function head, and head just says give me the top, top however many rows. And see here, here I said head three, give me only the top three rows. All right, before I forget, let me give you your first view quiz answer for today, which is the letter A, A as an apple, A as an apple is your first view quiz answer for today. Uh, if you want to select a range of columns, you, that can also be done. So um, again, with Star Wars, um, we have 14 columns. And what I can do is I can say, you know what? I want to select just uh, these columns, name through eye color. And so I can do um, Star Wars and then pipe it into select. And I'm going to do name colon uh, eye color, right? And here it just selects those those selected columns, right? Um, one thing you'll notice um, one thing about dplyr is it is aware of how wide your window is, and it tries to fit um, kind of as much information as it can without um, uh, without overflowing your window. Okay, so. Um, here, oh, and by default, it only kind of shows you your first 10 rows, but, um, but here it's, uh, it realized that, you know, if it tried to fit more kind of columns here, we would run out of space. And it also um, um, picks some kind of uh, width to, um, you know, kind of truncate some of these things. So you get Luke Skywa, and then there's a tilde to kind of indicate that, you know, there's actually more text here. And, um, and that's to kind of fit all of these columns. When I said, you know, I only want to select the six columns, it says, oh, you know what? I can actually fit, type out the whole thing. Luke Skywalker and, you know, uh, his aunt, Beru, white son, Lars. I, I didn't know that was her middle name, but, um, uh, you, you know, you have that, and, and it can kind of, um, you know, fit the whole thing in, and so it, it prints it out rather than trying to truncate it, okay? Uh, same thing with kind of uh, going on with hair color and skin color and whatnot, okay? So, um, so you have that. So uh, name colon. So you can use the colon operator to kind of specify a, uh, a span of rows. This only applies if you've used uh, if you're using the dplyr. So you have to have dplyr the tidyverse loaded in order to use this uh, ability of um, going col um, using the colon operator to kind of say from this column through that column. Uh, we have some select helpers, all right, and you can um, ask for more, um, more help on this, and you can kind of do a question mark on the select helpers, and it will pull up help here. Um, 
and and there are um, these things you know everything last column starts with ends with contains matches numeric range uh, and there's some uh, examples for a lot of these things so let me um, let me kind of show you uh, some of these things all right so for example I could do um, select uh, the name column and any column that ends with color all right so from Star Wars select name and any co column that ends with color and we get hair color skin color and eye color in addition to name okay there is um, there's something known as regular expressions and um, I don't think we'll have time to really delve into regular expressions this quarter um, I do cover regular expressions uh, in a little bit more depth in my class 102a but um, regular expressions is a thing that's handy and useful in some cases and it might be worth uh, taking some time to uh, to learn it I think data camp has a introductory course on regular expressions but anyway um, this thing s dollar sign according to regular expressions is a way to say we want something that ends with the character s okay so this basically says s and the dollar sign basically means at the end of the string so so this says you know find something where s is followed with the s end of the string which means um, that the column ends with the uh, the s okay and so we're gonna select the column name plus any columns that end with an s and so we're gonna get name mass species films vehicles and starships okay and uh, and so we get those things and again head three says just the top three rows so um, so this is what we have so far um, you can also select you can also specify a vector a vector with names in it so I'm going to write the names name mass and height and these will be the columns that I want to select and um, and you can do this and you can say Star Wars select all of and then you put in the uh, the name of the vector now you might be like well <laughs> why would I do that right well isn't it just easier to do Star Wars oops, Star Wars you know select uh, name what did I say name mass and height okay sure okay that that's gonna give you the same results and so you might wonder, well, why would you do this? Okay, well, you might have a different function, right? So you might have a different function, and somewhere else in your, uh, you know, you might have, um, you know, some function where, you know, you, you do something, da 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 and the result of this function is that you're going to end up selecting, you end up entering, you create a vector with these things, okay? And so how do you get... Uh, once you have this vector that has the things, how do you select that? Then, then this is where it becomes handy. Okay, now you can say select. And if I just did select vars here, um, it it kind of complains a little bit. It says, you know what, this is a little bit ambiguous because what if you had a column called vars? Okay, so so um, you know, fortunately for us, dplyr you know does its best, but um, to be unambiguous. Um, th this is how we do it, right? Because, you know, because when you name a vector, so here I named this vector vars, but what if I call this vector name, right? So now, so now ha <laughs> name is a vector with this, and if I did Star Wars um, select name, okay, now it only does this, right? But if I do select all of name, then it then it looks all of name, okay, right? Name has a uh, name is a vector here, right? So, so it, it's not a good idea to create a vector that shares the same name as one of your columns, okay? Because that creates these ambiguous selections or uh, ambiguous situations. So here I you know I have a vector named name. I also have a column named name, and so um, when I do Star Wars select name, dplyr just says, okay, I'm going to just select this one column. Over here, I've done Star Wars select all of name, and now this time dplyr understands we're talking about the vector name, the vector name which contains name, mass, and height, and um, 
probably I should have called it names, okay, names of the columns that I want, okay. So Star Wars select all of the, um, you know, vector names, and it's going to select those three. So, you know, general practice, probably don't create vectors that um, have the same name as some of your columns, but sometimes that happens, right? Sometimes that happens, and we need a way to kind of uh, specify unambiguously, right? So, you know, sometimes <laughs> best practice, it would be nice to have a group of friends where no two people share the same name, and then when you talk about, uh, you know, uh, your friend Ethan, you know exactly who you're talking about. But sometimes you have a group of, <laughs> of friends and you have multiple Ethans in there or something. And, uh, and so, you know, we, have, we need to have a way to be unambiguous. A lot of times you use your last name and, you know, there's a humorous scene and, well, maybe another spoiler, right? Um, you know, referring to Peter Parker and, uh, you know, multiple people respond. Um, so... How does, um, um, you know, dplyr kind of handles it by saying, all right, if you use all of, we know you're talking about a vector rather than just, um, you know, the column that might be called bars. Um, all right. Uh, so that's selecting columns. All right. What about um, selecting your rows? Okay. So to, uh, we call this filtering, right? So we're filtering is we specify conditions to filter out um, particular rows of the data. And so when you um, filter your rows of data, you can specify basically anything that can be answered with like a true or false. So here we can say, is the name, the value inside the name column equal to R2D2? And this is gonna be true only for this one row, the one row where the character is R2D2. So we're going to say Star Wars filter name is equal equal R2D2. You have to use the double equal to kind of specify a test for equality. We want to test to make sure that um, uh, that row, that, that value is equal to R2D2. And, uh, and we do that and we get back, um, we get back our character, right? Our, um, our favorite droid here. Um, you can specify uh, multiple multiple conditions, all right? So here, um, I'm going to say, give me all the rows. Give me all the rows where we have either a human or a droid, okay? And um, when you do something like this, you want to use the in operator, the in operator. So um, you don't want to do, okay? Let me let me exp show you what you don't want to do. So. So here I've got Star Wars, and we're going to do filter species percent in percent. Um, okay, here I did height less than 175, but let me just um, let me just specify, show you. First, I'm going to say, say uh, we only want humans or droid species. There's a total of 41 characters that are humans or droids. Now, if I do species equal equal uh, human droid then um, then we get only 23 rows all right now what's what happens is when you do equals equals human comma droid what R does is it, it's a little bit of a strange thing but it's going to um, it's going to take a look at, uh, here, we're missing the column species here. All right, so first, so we want human, inhuman or droid, okay, versus um, equals equals human droid, because if, let me just show you what happens. So here is Star Wars, and the way it's going to work is when you do equals equals human droid, um, you can you you have to imagine some kind of uh, a column where we write out human droid human droid and we kind of just repeat this over and over and over again and here we're looking to see um, when when is it equal to this right and so um, so here I've got um, Luke human matches so Luke Luke comes back true. C-3PO, droid, which matches here. So C-3PO will get returned. 
uh, R2D2 is droid, but because of the way we've specified this thing where we said equals equals human or droid, it's trying to match up is droid, does droid match up with the third entry, which is going to be human? Does Darth Vader match up? So uh, um, does Darth Vader, which is human, does that match up with droid? No, it doesn't. So those don't get returned. Um, Leia Organa is human and matches up with kind of that thing. Uh, uh, after Leia, we have Owen. Owen <laughs> is, supposed, is paired up with droid here. And so that doesn't match. So Owen doesn't get returned, but Beru does. And so you can see that, right? We get Luke, we get C-3PO, but we're missing R2-D2. We're missing D Darth Vader. We get Leia. We're missing Owen. We get Beru, right? So you don't want to do this equals equals human droid because this this is going to be looking for this particular order, human droid, human droid. And, you know, if you specify, you know, human droid or, I don't know, Wookiee or something, it's going to go human droid Wookiee, human droid Wookiee, and it's going to kind of repeat that. So what you need to do is you need to use the in operator, and it's going to kind of just check is uh, Luke's species, is that one of human or droid? Yes. C-3PO, human, human or droid, R2-D2, human or droid. And it's going to kind of return these, and it's not going to, um, try to match match up the uh, the row row by row in some kind of you know cyclical pattern that um, that we've established. Okay, so um, so that's that's a key there is uh, you you want to make sure you are using uh, the in operator. Okay, um, here I've specified multiple conditions, so not just it has to be a human or a droid, but we also want to make sure that their height is less than 175. Right. And so, you know, as far as our characters go, you know, Darth Vader, if we look at um, uh, everybody here, Darth Vader's height, he's, uh, he's very tall, 202, so he gets filtered out. Whoops, which thing am I looking at? Darth Vader doesn't show up in here because his height is not under 175. So, um, so this, is, uh, this is required there. The, um, the dplyr functions can be piped into each other. And so um, we can just kind of take, take one function, we can apply it, and then we can take those results and do another function. Um, here, if you want um, you know, different conditions, you can, do, you can specify an or, right? So here I'm going to do hair color equals none. So either uh, they have no hair color or eye color is black. Okay, and so um, people, uh, you know, no hair, um, and Darth Vader apparently has yellow eyes. No hair, but yellow eyes, so, that, so that's fine. Greedo, um, this is like a weird question, so I guess it says missing. There's no hair. Um, it, the, it's, I guess it's a nonsense to ask what is the hair color, um, but Greedo has black eyes. Okay, these this droid... Has uh, has red eyes and um, and uh, and I guess that's it. Okay. So anyway, we're we're getting back all of these matches for which rows to select, uh, which rows to filter through, and then we can take those results and we can just say, you know what? I only want these columns. I, want, I only want the name, the species, their home world, their hair color, and their uh, eye color. Um, and uh, and I didn't know. Actually, I don't know. Um, Bosk. Bosk is like that lizard, lizard bounty hunter. Is that right? Let's see. Star Wars. Bosk. Yeah, this dude. Bosk uh, was a male Trandoshan bounty hunter. Was. Uh oh. All right. Well, um, we have that. Okay. Oh, Lobot. He's like uh, <laughs> he's the guy on Bespin with the little like uh, computer ears. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I don't know every every single one of these. All right, we got Gungans for Nobu. All right. Um, <clears throat> so you know you can take take the things and pipe them into each other. All right, so a, a few more um, functions. Um, we have arrange. Arrange allows you to kind of sort sort the rows in, in your results, which is handy if you want to look for 
you know, like the top five or the top 10 or something like that. So, so a range is handy to kind of get the results. And then on top of that, you can use select to just select the, um, you know, the, the X rows here. So here I'm going to say, you know, let's, uh, let's just select these columns, name, birth year, height, and mass. And then let's put them in order, uh, in descending order of birth year, descending order of birth year. And so Yoda, um, is, uh, is old and, um, <laughs> and and it writes 896 and this is based off of i think a, a throwaway line in uh empire strikes back or or return of the jedi i forget when he says uh and he's talking to luke and he says oh you know when you're 900 years old you're not going to look as good as i but he, and it's like a yoda speak right so when 900 i don't know um um and and so you know they kind of back solve and say oh he, he was born exactly 900 years ago <laughs> which means he was 896 years old at the Battle of Yavin and, and stuff like that uh, because I guess that movie took place well anyway all right so um, so anyway we have uh, Yoda at 896 and I guess Jabba was 600 years old and Chewbacca um, <laughs> 200 years old and you know he just doesn't get the same respect that uh, that he probably deserves but um all right and so you have you know all of these um, different characters and uh, and and then they're in order of from oldest to uh, to youngest and um, and so on and so forth okay um, and um, and we have that okay um, we can then uh, we can slice slice the rows all right so um, so here if I wanted to just take the five oldest characters I would then take this and pipe the result into slice um, so so I could do um, you know Star Wars uh, you know just arrange in descending order by uh, year and then um, and then we can slice the uh, the first five rows. Oops, what happened? A oh, birth year. Okay, so in descending order of birth year, and then you know the top five rows. This is uh, this is what we get. Um, if you don't have them in any kind of order you can then um, you can just slice however you want so again here is Star Wars here's the full uh, the full thing and I can just say you know what? I want rows 6 through 10 so I can just slice this out and I can be Star Wars slice 6 through 10 and um, so starting at row 6 and going through row 10 so because I'm taking this out this will become the new row 1 the root becomes the new row 2 and so on and so forth Obi-Wan becomes row 5 you can do um, you can do slice sample. Slice sample says um, I just want um, an arbitrary selection of say five rows or ten rows or something like that. Okay, so you know a lot of times you know if you just want to take a peek at your the resulting table, you, you can use something like head head five or or tail head will get you your top five tail will get your bottom five um, but slice sample can be handy to kind of make sure that overall the results look kind of like the way you want them to so if you do like slice 10 it'll give you a random selection of 10 rows because if you only look at the top 10 rows if you only do head 10 um, you know your first few rows might have be like complete entries with nothing missing and they might have nice little properties and so everything looks good. You're always like, okay, I'm always looking at the top 10 rows, and maybe your top 10 rows always look good. But there might be problems, like somewhere in the middle. And, uh, and if you're only looking at the top 10, you might not pick up on those problems. So if you do slice sample, um, you know, it'll get a random selection, and you're a little bit more likely to get something somewhere in the middle, somewhere. Um, and again, it's possible that, you know, in your sample, you, don't, you still don't pick up any errors, and errors do exist. But um, it does kind of reduce the, uh, the risk of that happening by taking a random selection. Uh, slice min and slice max um, is similar to using an, a range and then head or tail. So here, um, 
uh, I did star wars slice max based on mass I want n equal to 3 I want the basically the characters with the three largest values of mass which is Jabba the Hutt and, uh, and well, I don't actually know who who else was being selected so if I did star wars so so I could do star wars um, slice max uh, based on birth year right and then we would get Yoda uh, so let's do um, n equals three and so these would be um, the three characters with the with the you know um, highest values for birth year okay um, we can do Star Wars um, slice max mass and um, and we get Jabba uh, oh Grievous that's uh, yeah the uh, the robot um, the robot guy with the four arms or the four lightsabers um, dude all right general grievous um, so okay so yes he he has a heavy mass ig 88s a, a bounty hunter robot um, um, okay and uh, and so you know they weigh a lot okay uh, mutate mutate allows us to create new columns and so here are some examples. So if we take height, which is currently measured in um, centimeters, we can convert them into inches, and we would do um, we would just take that value and divide by 2.54. That's the conversion factor to go from centimeters to to inches. Um, when you do uh, mutate, um, the new variables you create get tacked on at the end. Okay. So here we can say, all right, um, the result. You know, we start off with 14 columns after I've done a mutate. Now I have 15 columns, but unfortunately, it doesn't fit in here because uh, we've got other variables I got that got cut off. So here, um, after I do a mutate, uh, I'm going to say select. I want to select their height uh, and the height in inches, and I just want the top row. And it says, okay, Luke Skywalker, 172 centimeters, 67.7 inches. Okay. Um, when you use mutate, it's going to add a new column. So it has to, the resulting column or the resulting thing has to have the same number of values as the number of rows in the data set. So if I tried to um, create a, use the function mean, the function mean is not going to work, right? So if I said, um, create a column, uh, select, um, so let's say, uh, okay, so I'm going to do Star Wars, and we're going to say select, I want the column's name and mass, and if I do um, mutate, and we're, I'm going to just write mean equals uh, mean of the mass column, okay, this might, it might be able to spit it out but uh, no, actually, yeah, it, here, let me do um, na to rm equals true. So this, this says ignore anything with a missing mass, all right? So look, look at this. It, it spits out the number 97.3, and it puts it everywhere, <laughs> okay? So this is, if we take the mean for all of them, it's going to give us the same value for everyone, which, which is not what we want to do, okay? We don't want, you generally don't want the same value for every single person in your your data set unless there's like a specific reason for it basically when you have a variable you want that thing to vary from row to row to row okay now it's fine if some people have the same value but if everybody has the same value it's it's better not to represent it with a variable so um, more um, so better than using something like the mean is you use something like the cumulative mean okay so this is cum cumulative mean uh, what am i doing why is this today cumulative mean oh okay yeah it doesn't use the argument na dot rm equals true that's why it's complaining um all right and so the way this works is it says okay 
the first value I see is 7, so the cumulative mean so far. Um, I should probably call this the cumulative mean. Okay, so far is 77. The next value we see is 75. So 77 plus 75, the mean of those two numbers is 76. All right, what's the mean of, uh, say, 77, 75, and 32? The mean of those numbers is 61.3. What's the mean of um, 77, 75, 32, and 136? Okay, the mean of those numbers is 80. So this is the cumulative mean. As you add one and you recalculate the mean, these are the uh, the values that you get. Okay. In this case, it's it's a little bit weird to calculate the cumulative mean. I don't know exactly what uh, what it is that you're kind of calculating, but uh, you know. Perhaps in maybe like uh, if you want like the running average, that's basically what the cumulative mean is. So um, here are some useful mutate functions, okay, that uh, that can work here. So you have p min and p max, which is element wise min and max. You have the cumulative mean and cumulative max, cumulative sum, cumulative product. You have a between function, which will return true and false if the values are between A and B. Um, you have lead and lag, and you have end tile. So here are some examples. So I've, I'm going to do, um, we're going to just create a bunch of columns. We're going to just select uh, mass and birth year for these different characters. And then we're going to calculate cumulative minimum mass, the ratio, the mass year P min, and lag 2. Okay, so the cumulative min mass is just basically as you go along, what is the minimum value of mass that you've seen so far? So first we see 77, that's the smallest min mass we've seen so far. Then we see 75, that's now the smallest mass we've seen so far. Then we see 32, that's the smallest mass we've seen so far. 136, still the smallest mass we've seen so far is 32. We haven't seen anything less than 32 yet. Okay, and uh, you know here we get another 32, and and so the cumulative min, so the basically the smallest the minimum value I've seen so far is is 32. It's kind of like uh, world records, right? Um, you know what's the uh, what's the fastest time, and uh, and it's going to stay you know the fastest uh, time, the the minimum you know time to complete the race is a certain number, and until a new lower number comes along, you know that's going to stay, right? the world record is going to remain unchanged until somebody beats it, right? Um, and, and that's basically what the cumulative min is, and, or in other cases, if you want the world record for highest score, you'll use the cumulative max type of thing. All right, the, um, the ratio is, uh, here I'm just doing uh, mass divided by um, the mean of the mass, okay? So here I'm calculating for everybody, for everybody I calculated the mean of the mass, which um, I guess we found um, some, somewhere along the way. Uh, that mass to be 97.3. So the mean of every single person out there was 97.3. So if I did 77 divided by 97.3, you know, I get 0.791. And that's how we're getting this ratio. So I'm doing the mass divided by the mean of everyone. And so 77 over 97 is 0.791. And then Darth Vader, 136. You know, 136 divided by 97.3 gives me um, basically 1.4. Uh, and that's what we have here. Okay. The min mass P min is the element wise, element wise minimum. So it says look at the. Um, Look at the uh, mass. Uh, look at the mass and look at the birth year. Which number is smaller, right? So these are this. Is, uh, this is a silly thing to kind of do, but we say between 77 and 19, this number is smaller. Between 75 and 112, 75 is smaller. Between 32 and 33, the 32 is smaller, right? So you can imagine here it's silly comparing mass and birth year, but you can imagine another scenario. Um, where you have several columns and you kind of need to uh, to compare things, right? So you might have like, um, uh, I don't know, <laughs> position A, position B, position C, and of those three, which one was the uh, the smallest or the maximum or something? So that that would where P min or P max comes in. 
Uh, let me give you your last two view quiz answers. The last two view quiz answers for today are E as an elephant and A as an apple. E as an elephant and A as an apple. So we'll, um, so, so we have that. Um, so that's PMIN. And then lag basically just takes uh, one of the columns and then offsets it. So here I'm going to do um, this column, mass year PMIN, and I'm going to lag it by two. So basically this exact column right here, and you can see uh, all of these values just get offset by two. And so sometimes you kind of need to do a comparison from you know two weeks ago or something like that, and you can do a lag there. OK, uh, we didn't get to this section, group by and summarize. We will um, pick up on this uh, and on Monday. And so, um, so that's it. Um, thanks for watching the video. Uh, make sure you answer your view quiz um, um, you know, by Monday. And so have a great weekend, and uh, we will see you all on Monday.